Now, we're going to go back to where you learned ventriloquism. Let's go to you. Are you a ventriloquist? I'm a uh, t retired ventriloquist, let's say. <laughs> I came to Van Haven. We've been coming to Van Haven since the early 70s. And, um, of course, I, I'm a puppeteer. We do a lot of performing in, in different circles. And I thought I should give it a try. And I did. I bought a, a wooden dummy of pretty expensive one. I worked on it. I, I practiced. I performed a few times. And it just didn't come easy to me. And living with one who is so good, <laughs> I chose to be her encourager and her co-writer and critiquer. So that's what it's been the last 15 years or so. Right. I write a routine. I tell him it stinks. And he says, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and then Quite honestly, I think every ventriloquist, every good one, needs a cheerleader in their life. A lot of well, them like are moms. Well, like what Terry was saying yesterday yeah. in, the, in the workshop, you need to bounce, you need brainstorming and bouncing ideas mm -hmm. off. And, no, that idea is too old. You need something more current or whatever. Um, and I was able to give her some feedback on her program here Wednesday night that's that she right. performed. And uh, I think it, it helped and it made it better overall. And that's my part is... Um, being her partner, her backstage partner. But I think it's really important that it's not just critiquing or not just saying, I can do that better and here's a better line for you. He, he lets me still make it mine, but he's a cheerleader. When I do something right, he's But I know good ventriloquism, <laughs> and I, I, ju I judge competitions. We, and I, we do a lot of training events that we sponsor, and... I end up judging ventriloquism because I know what it should look like and what what's wrong with it if it's not the way it should be. You know. So you were uh, were you had an interest in puppets prior to getting together, or no? Not so. She not basically we brought you into the this. ventriloquism. Oh. Got us into creative ministry, yeah. And then when Sesame Street came along in the early '70s, everybody was saying in in the church circles, "Wow, that's pretty cool. Why don't we? Why don't we?" Use puppets to teach boys and girls about the Bible and about you know Christian values and so on and so. Um, we were among the first people to get involved to do puppets in the church back in the early 70s, and it became eventually a, a little hobby and then a little business and then a bigger business. Okay, so One Way Street mm -hmm. was born in. Michigan, 1974. 1974. And it grew out of your own church ministry our own actions? Our yes, own it did. ministry, our own family ministry, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, I was a ventriloquist first and always interested in drama. So currently I'm teaching middle school kids puppetry, drama, theater, the creative arts, do a musical every year. So really heavy in drama, but a little bit of puppetry, a semester class that I'm teaching. But when we started, I infected him with puppet fever. <laughs> I, I tell people that I was the reluctant husband. You know, I, I, she said, "Let's let's let's start a let's start a puppet ministry." And I said, "Well, I don't think so. I don't think I can do that." And then, then uh, finally, I said, "Well, if you'll let me stay behind the puppet stage and not come out, I'll do that, and so I can hide back there." You know. So I did that. I became the backstage puppeteer. She was the out front person. I learned to do some kind of cutesy voices, and uh, it, I was hooked. <laughs> there is a disease called puppet fever, and uh, we've been spreading it around the world. In many, <laughs> for a long time. For a long time. For a long time. <laughs>